guys, so much drama, so much flip-flopping from Dan Larimer that it makes me think he's like a politician. Now, I understand that EOS is a new project with new approaches, so there will be growing pains and changes, but for a lot of supporters, they were vehemently defending certain decisions and design choices by EOS, and now all of those are flipped on top of its head. They're backtracking on their plans about how EOS is gonna function. So in that case, it just looks really disingenuous and has the whole crypto community wonder what the heck is going on. So in this video today, I'm gonna keep it short. It's gonna be like an EOS update video video when I share with you some news about different things that they're changing back or kind of reversing on their position in terms of three-year token rise, the function of the arbitrator, and also Block One's participation in BP voting. So if you're interested in all that stuff, stay tuned and all of it's coming right up. Hey everyone, this is Kevin from BFB and welcome back to another series of Kevin Talks Crypto where I share with you my thoughts on the most interesting things in the crypto space. So if you're interested by my content during this bear market, I would greatly appreciate it if you can smash that like button, subscribe, and also leave me a comment down below and I'll definitely get back to you. Okay, so let's talk EOS. Taylor Monahan, who is famous for creating my Ether wallet, pretty much says EOS is like the Kardashians and you love it or hate it, it's cultish, you watch it with a guilty pleasure, and I can not agree anymore with her analysis. There's so much stuff moving on in the EOS world, so much drama, FUD, counterpoints, whatever, that it's hard not to follow it even if I don't have a lot of EOS coins. Also, because in this bear market, there's not a lot of other stuff going on with other projects. EOS is the one that everyone is focused on. Its search trends was actually eclipsed Ethereum recently because of that. So definitely more EOS content coming for you guys. So here is a chat with Dan Larimer. This is what he says. He says he no longer wants arbitrators to kind of help out with stolen keys. He says that shouldn't be the point of this ECAF and that causes more damage than good. And that it should only be like things that were wrong with the code, like smart contract bugs, the spirit of the code per se, are things that the arbitrators should be able to reverse, not stolen keys, stolen funds. And also he stated that he supported removing the three year required to use your EOS or else face getting them taken away as kind of like abandoned property per se. These two points were heavily defended by many members of the EOS communities. For example, with the arbitration, they're like, this is good. We don't want hackers to win. So this is something that no other crypto can do. And many other cryptocurrency projects and followers were saying this is so centralized, not censorship resistant at all. But there was this like two sides of the puzzle, right? And now what Dan is supporting is to take away the EOS supporters points, which would be potentially EOS's USP or unique selling proposition. So like, what's the deal going on here? Like, are there points no longer valid? Do you guys not care about hackers taking away people's funds anymore? Because then EOS won't be really that different from other projects in this case. And also a little bit more about the three year property rights. Many people didn't like that, but also people supported it saying that it was like internet domains. Like, you know, if you buy a domain name, you can't just sit on it forever. You have to actively renew it every year or else it gets taken away. So they're saying that that makes sense. And also that EOS's approach is kind of similar to that. But now if that's gone to, that just leaves me questioning like, what the heck do they actually want it to look like? And so here's an article by Coindesk. Block.1 wants to rewrite the entire EOS constitution and they do have a lot of power and sway. So pretty much if they support it somehow or some way that it's gonna get through most likely. And I wanna quote this part right here. Am I correct in understanding you're proposing removal of the entire current constitution and replacing it with one that only refers to arbitrators being able to rule on code versus intent and code vulnerabilities slash hacks like DAO. Dan Larimer said yes. So yeah, I guess it looks like the whole EOS constitution is getting stripped and many parts of it changed. And here's the exact statement from Block.1. If you want to get it from the horse's mouth, you can go to Block.1 and then the reasoning is on a post on their news page. Also, another thing I want to talk about is Block.1 is going to join EOS voting after all. Now, if you guys don't remember, they have 10% of all EOS tokens and they said that they were going to to leave the EOS project and let the community launch it and manage it to kind of be like unbiased and only support the code. But it looks like that's not gonna happen anymore and they've changed their mind on that because they're going to quote, recognize its responsibility to participate as an active minority voting 
member. Carefully consider their approach, allocating votes to block producers that share core values necessary. I mean, look, it's good in practice because there's a lot of whales controlling shady block producers, voting them into the top 21, and block that one can counteract that. But then their whole kind of point to stay away as impartial viewers is just gone out the window. Like, what the heck? And they say minority voting member, but 10% is actually enormous, especially because not that many coins are voting. Last time I looked, it was like 27%. So they can easily rewrite the whole top 21 of block producers all by themselves with their votes. This is like enormous power and enormous centralization and solely one party in practice. And another statement by them, they're going to participate as voting community members. So I want to hear what you guys think, EOS fans, critics, and just crypto bystanders, what you guys think about this. We have the reversal on token property rights, which is probably good, their new role of the arbitrator, and also their participation in block producer voting. So many changes, so much drama. That's EOS for you guys. Catch you guys later next time. Hope you have an amazing rest of your day. This is Kevin, and I'm out.